Hello, welcome to the Impact in Action weekly live show where we talk about mindset shifts and tactical approaches to help you put your impact in action. So how long is your to-do list? I, I can imagine that it's a doozy, right? Does it look like one of those CVS um, uh, printouts? You know, you go to CVS and you put in your code and you buy your product and they print you out a list that's like, as long as your body of coupons and stuff like that. So it, if that's your to-do list, it might be too long, right? It may have work items on it, household chores, uh, I don't know, family obligations. You know, even your shopping list is intermingled into this massive to-do list. Well, so our to-do list can be equally our friend and it can be equally our foe, depending on how we approach it. So let's talk about it. So my name is Marianne Lombardi. I am the founder and CEO of Marianne Lombardi Coaching. I am also an author. I am also a recovering government executive, uh, the single parent of the coolest teenager on the planet. I am a cat mom. I am uh, clarity obsessed and action oriented. I am here uh, on this planet to help women and uh, non-binary entrepreneurs clarify and simplify so they can take the bold action that is necessary to build a profitable business, but build a business that's in line with the life that they want to lead. So let's dig in to how to tackle that to-do list and free up more time for you to work on the essential parts of your business, the important parts of your business, and also free up time for you to spend that time on the personal side of your life. So here are five keys to tackling that monster of a to-do list. First and foremost, let's dump the to-do list. Okay, get rid of it, right? First, we need to get rid of that to-do list. You know, that paper or the notebook lists with all the check boxes, just dump it right? Use that notebook, the planner or the sticky notes that you have been using for your to-do list. Use that system, that strategy for planning, but not for your to-do lists, right? Those things are great for brainstorming ideas and mapping out um, your programs and products or taking notes or doodling like pictures of your cat. I don't know. Or being creative. Again, mapping your strategy, but not to hold your to-do list. Because the truth is, what gets done gets on your calendar. So block it. So time blocking is a time management approach that has you block specific times on your calendar to do certain tasks and certain activities. So make sure you are blocking on your calendar anything that needs to get done that day. Because when you block it, the task is given a dedicated time to get done. This helps you not only accomplish that task, because as you're following your calendar, you are seeing it coming up, but it helps you get a better sense of how long each task actually takes you to accomplish. So get it on your calendar because again, what gets done is what's on your calendar. So number two, multitasking is a myth. Now, this may not be the first time you have heard this, but it bears repeating because you still hear people talk about and brag about how great they are at multitasking. But the reality is that multitasking is a myth, right? It's the act of attempting to do more than one thing at a time. But the truth is you cannot do work on more than one task at a time. It is not possible. What's actually happening when you think you are multitasking is that your brain is switching between one task and then the other task. Now, you may think you are good at this, right? And maybe you are good at this, but it is not something to aspire to be great at because it kills your productivity. When your brain is doing this, switching from task A to B to C, then jumping back to A, then jumping to like F or something like that, and then winding your way back to B, or I don't know, I'm confused already, right? When your brain is jumping back and forth like that and consistently shifting focus, it creates a lag as you try to figure out where you left off. So this kills your productivity, it kills your flow. So stop doing it and go back to time blocking instead. Work on one task at a time, complete that task, and then move on to the other task. So number three is that your list is just too long. Not everything that needs to get done today actually needs to get done. And also not everything that needs to get done actually needs to get done at all. So having a longer list isn't a, a badge of honor or a status symbol. It doesn't indicate that somehow you are working harder than someone else. So, so strip it down. Simplify it, strip it down. Make sure that you run your list through your business priorities. 
ask yourself, so where are you in your business? What stage are you at? Depending on that stage, you're going to have different priorities than, say, another stage, right? So say you're focused, uh, say focused on only that. Remember, because you can't do growth activities if you are still trying to validate your business product, right? So don't try to add those growth activities to your to-do list right now. If you're in the early stage of your business, say you're focused on um, uh, visibility or you're focused on lead generation, then, then just do that. The rest will come as you expand that visibility and as you generate more leads. You need to do one before the other and you need to do it well and you need to do it consistently so you can move on to that next stage of your business. So keep it simple, keep it focused, keep it lean. Trim that to-do list to the only things that you need to do now. So number four, delegate what you can. Okay, not everything that needs to get done needs to get done by you. So know your, your zone of genius, right? And delegate what's that, what's not in that zone. Sit down with yourself and have a cocktail or like a coffee and like have a heart to heart about where you excel and where you are the bottleneck of your business. Because you can't and you should not do everything. Nobody can do everything. Say you struggle with uh, business systems, hire somebody to create them for you so you can be efficient and focused. Or uh, maybe posting content is not your jam. So finding someone to help you do that would be key. If you uh, struggle with technology, for instance, find someone who can teach that to you or take over that technology. See, keep in mind, you can pay for this help or you can exchange services for that help. There's lots of ways to make it work. So learn to delegate because the, the more efficient and focused you are on your zone of genius, the faster you're going to grow and the more revenue you're going to earn, which, of course, then you can reinvest that money into hiring more help, which keeps you focused on your zone of genius. It's a nice circle. So again, delegate what you can delegate. And last, but so not least, is um, other people's emergencies are not your emergency, okay? Other people's emergencies are not your own. You are in control of your time and your attention. It's all yours. You are in absolute control of your time and your attention. Women, and uh, often the primary caregivers of a family are used to doing everything at someone else's request. And maybe that is out of necessity. It could be out of habit or maybe because partners or spouses or uh, say older children, maybe it's even colleagues and supervisors aren't doing their part to help us. And women often are the ones who pick up the slack. But just because someone is demanding your attention doesn't mean you have to give it to them. You have a right to not be available working 24 seven. You have a right to eat dinner with your family and not be interrupted. You have a right to go to the bathroom and not bring your darn phone in there with you. That may come from personal experience. I don't know. You have the right to have a partner that contributes to uh, the home and the childcare. You have a right to have your time and attention respected. So care for it and protect it. It is good for your mental health. It is good for your physical health. It will help you build confidence and uh, effectiveness. It'll also just make you happier. So, so set boundaries and communicate them clearly. Turn off the notifications, put a sign on your door, um, have a family meeting, definitely discuss it with your colleagues, but please do this. And I, I know that it can be hard if you're um, not used to setting rules and forcing boundaries, but please start. It's, it's gonna be good for you and the people around you because these mismatched expectations are what lead to miscommunication. They lead to that strife and that frustration and all of the things that get in the way of you being efficient and effective and focused with your time. So it also keeps you from being present with the people that you work with and more importantly, with being present with the people that you love. So remember, other people's emergencies are not your own. You are in control of your time and your attention. So let's take a second to uh, recap how we are tackling our to-do list to free up time for your business and for you. 
Number one, we talked about dumping the to-do list and jumping to time blocking instead. Number two, multitasking. Remember, it is that myth. Don't do it. Time block instead. Number three, that list is too long. Shorten it and only do the stuff that's in the stage of business that you are in. Number four, delegate what you can delegate and focus only on your zone of genius. Number five, other people's emergencies are not your own. Build in the boundaries that are going to help you succeed. Okay. So let me know how it goes. And if you haven't already, jump into our Facebook group uh, to continue the conversation. Facebook.com backslash group backslash impact in action group. We'd love to see you there. And in the meantime, try out one of these five and let me know how it goes. All right. See you next time.